But liches are a classic creature in Dungeons and Dragons. They're a classic creature in fantasy, and they are quite scary <laughs> and powerful. So let's get into the basics. So. If you're a new adventurer that dives into the depths of a lich's lair and you stumble upon the lich, you've seen every skeleton, every undead, maybe a death knight or two, but the lich is something else. A lich is a humanoid creature, but very dead. Looks humanoid. It has rotting flesh all over its face, very dried up flesh with skeletal um, appearances. It might have some hair that's falling off, long white hair, or maybe a beard. They look very ancient and old. They wear these very fine robes with jewels on them. They are one of the most stylish undead, in my opinion. <laughs> and uh, they, they just stink of magic and death. So pretty scary. Yeah, and what we're dealing with here is, in general, now this is in general, an evil, undead spellcaster with immense power and intellect. A, a very high spellcaster. Yes. Very strong. And an undead one, uh, as I said, and that is unique because a lot of things that are smart and powerful are not necessarily also undead. Yes. Um, so this is among one of the most powerful undead that exist and we'll explain why they keep their like consciousness and their intelligence as a undead it's pretty neat yes so as ethan said they are skeletal with thin skin stretched over their bony uh bodies uh they do have red light you could say scarlet you could say crimson but it is a reddish light that shines in their empty eye sockets typically can it also be green or is it always red it can definitely be green as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the official lore says it's red, but that does not mean the picture is Interesting. I actually didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and so, and like you said, they are one of the most stylish undead. They always wear... They got the drip. Yes. Yeah, all the jewels. Well, like, so imagine, like, this undead doesn't just, doesn't look, like, all ugly and, like, he, he's wearing, like, magic items, you know, like magic robes right. magic jewels like he might have a wand or two might hold a staff yeah very stylish. And if it's not magic. magical it's gonna be rotten and dark but will always be fine so typically it does it does wear fine robes um but those robes could be pretty old so Probably they may not necessarily old. still be they're very fine all right so that's what they look like in general, what they are in terms of personality is they are a being that has embraced the undead life. Or someone who actually wants to be undead. Yes. Which is and, very... Well, what they want is immortality. So they've exactly. embraced undead life for a chance at immortality. Um, <clears throat> and, bec and due to this, in a basic sense, their personality is grandiose, so self-involved, and typically very evil. And we'll get into why they're like this. Um, one more thing about kind of them in a basic sense. If you're picturing one walking, uh, they actually do more of a glide than a walk. They kind of hover around. I mean, don't, can't they actually like levitate if they want to? I'm sure they can, and that's kind of what they do. Their body is more of a formality. Uh, they're kind of just this magic being that's com completely run by magic. They even speak by magic. They, their mouths don't work. Their lungs don't move. Their throat is dry and dead. So although they may move their jaws magically to give the appearance of talking, they typically don't even bother, and they just speak out of magic. And that's kind of how everything about them works. That's just so cool. It's like you're so high with magic. You're like, you know what? I'm not even going to go talk to you normally. I'm going to flex my magic power by talking to you with magic. Yeah, so it can, it can seem like they're telepathic in that sense, but really yeah. they're just projecting a voice. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's them in a basic sense. Even the basics is a little bit of a, an elaborate thing, so was, you, can, you, know. you can imagine what this episode's about to be. The lich is quite fleshed out, not literally. And um, so let's get right into the stats. Alrighty, so at a CR of 21... Very high CR, very powerful boss. And I want to add to that that in their lair, they are actually a 22. Um, we'll get into why, but it's because their lairs are a big part of them. But yeah. for now, 
Let's talk about what they are in terms of stats on their own. With no layers. Yep. So at their own, they have an AC of 17. Pretty high for undead wearing robes. Um, they have an HP of 135. Pretty low for a high level uh, boss. Uh, their speed is 30, average. And now we'll get into their base stats. So at so with their strength, they get a plus zero. They're wizard skeletons and so not the strongest. They get a plus three to dexterity, a plus three to con, a plus five to intelligence, a plus two to wisdom, and a plus three to charisma. I was actually pretty surprised. It's not the craziest base stats compared to other things. No, and that is because in terms of them in their core they are very weak and so these stats would actually be like in the negatives if it wasn't for magic and so they're kind of like your classic magic user i mean everything about them is all about the magic they can they can shell out you know what i mean it's what they can do not who they are in a sense yeah there's nothing natural about them that's powerful it's all magic yeah it's all magic all magic yep so basically um Going along, they're saving throws. They get a plus 10 to con, pretty insane. They get a plus 12 to intelligence, also insane. They get a plus 9 to, w- and sorry, lastly, they get a plus 9 to wisdom. So yep. Really so good. pretty resistant to magic. Um, of course all right. they should be. I'll keep, I'll keep it moving. Uh, they have skills. So they have a plus 19 to arcana. That is... They, very large they know their magic. so as you can tell they know their magic um they have a plus 12 to history due to them being immortal they have a plus nine to insight that's big they, they're very insightful as well as wise and they have a plus nine to perception so their senses speaking of perception they have a they have true sight up to 120 feet and passive perception of 19 so you're not sneaking up on them and they speak common and five other languages of their the, choice. Their choice, the DM's choice. All right, but that's not all. Let's talk about how they fight. So first, they have some damage resistances. They have cold damage resistance, lightning resistance, and necrotic resistance. Pretty good. Pretty good. In terms of immunities, they have poison immunity, as well as bludgeoning Slashing and piercing from non-magical weapons. So all fi- normal physical attacks, useless against the lich. Yes. Nothing. Just useless. Nothing. And you can also throw diseased on there. Actually, speaking of that, let's. they have immunities to conditions. So they're immune to being charmed, exhausted, frightened, paralyzed, and poisoned. So not only are they... Uh, pretty good all-around stats, they also are pretty difficult to hurt... But they don't have the highest HP. So if you can find a way to hurt them, uh, it will work. <laughs> okay. So do you want to get into any of their actions or features? Um, or do you want me to? You can. Okay. We'll start with their features. So first off, they have legendary resistance. Mm-hmm. They can use this three times a day. And that just means they can take S- a saving throw. And if they fail it, they can say, actually... Mm, actually, you see, you fail. Yeah, you and, and they get to choose to succeed. All right, yes. a lot of things have that. Moving on. Rejuvenation is another feat that they have. And this is a very important one. Yeah, so a this is a very unique thing for the Lich. So basically, let's say your party goes in and you mess up the Lich and kill him. You're like, yes, we killed him, guys. Well, joke's on you. If the Lich has a phylactery which we'll explain later, basically where it stores its soul, it will, in 1d10 days, the phylactery will make the lich a new body. So, yeah. So yeah. basically, it puts, full hit points, the players sad. Full everything. Everything. He's back, baby. Makes the players real sad. Yeah, makes so killing sad. his body due to rejuvenation is, in the long run, pointless and will not kill the lich. You mm-hmm. must kill the phylactery as well. All right. Another thing they have is turn resistance, which means they have advantage on saves that turn undead. And so this is just like the Death Knight. They are like leaders of undead. They kind of give off undead energy. Undead around them are boosted. So this is kind of part of that. You can't turn undead around them as easily. Okay. Their big claim to fame, however, 
is their spell casting. So they are an 18th level spellcaster. They're, they use intelligence. God. And their spell save is a DC 20. Oh, so that's God. very high. And they have a plus 12 to hit on any spells Yikes. that are just to hit. All right, so let me quickly go through all the spells they have, and I'm just going to list them off, and we'll later tell you how they would use them. So, cantrips. They have Mage Hand, Prestidigination, and Ray of Frost. But look at that. They don't got Message. Sorry. So they're not they're not OP. That's good to know. No, Message is a teamwork mm-hmm. spell. Liches mm-hmm. typically uh, don't have anyone. They're to, just cool. Well, that's not true. They're okay, not anyway. True. Moving on, they have a couple first-level spells. They have Detect Magic, Magic Missile, Thunder Wave, and Shield. God, so many. They have a couple sev- second-level spells. Acid Arrow, Detect Thoughts, Invisibility, and Mirror Image. They have a couple third. Animate Dead, Counter Spell, Dispel Magic, Fireball. Fourth level, Blight, Dimension Door. Fifth level, Cloud Kill, Scrying. And sixth le- level, we're getting into their uh, real spells here. Disintegrate, Globe of Invulnerability. And we keep going with seventh level, Finger of Death and Plane Shift. Pretty eighth strong. level, Uh-oh. so they are getting to the top of the spells here. They can use Dominate Monster and Power Word Stun. And, oh, yes. And they have one last spell at ninth level. Power Word Stun kill yes so as you can see they have a lot of spells they have a big arsenal at their disposal and this is what makes them so formidable but they have a few other things they have a single action they can take that is separate from their spell casting and that is paralyzing touch so with this ability they can touch a creature within five feet and do 10 or 3d sixes cold damage to them nothing crazy but the creature must make a dc 18 con save or be paralyzed and this paralysis lasts i believe multiple minutes can they remake the check yes they can okay every turn (laughs) but it's a dc 18 so so rip the um the low the the rogue the unhealthy guy yeah yeah sure Okay, and that's them, except they also have legendary actions. Oh, God. So, yeah, if you thought they were only taking one turn per round, you were wrong. Liches are, are very tough to beat, and legendary actions don't help. So, they have three legendary actions per round. The first one is Cantrip. Oh, they can just cast one of their Cantrips, and typically that's going to be Ray of Frost. Th- the second legendary action they have costs two actions, and it's Paralyzing Touch. So that is the exact same thing as what their action is that we just explained. Um, But they can can do that as a legendary action as well if they want. All right. The third legendary action they have is Frightening Gaze. This requires two actions. And basically, in a 10-foot radius, you can pick a creature. They have to make a DC 18 Wisdom save. If they fail, they are frightened for one minute. So that's good to get people away from you. Or from... For the lich to get things away from them they have but they have a fourth legendary action and this one will cost all three of their legendary actions for the round and it's called disrupt life so if creatures get a little too close for comfort they can target all non-undead within 20 feet and all of them must make a dc 18 con save if they fail they take 21 or 66's necrotic damage and if they succeed, they take half. So this is a guaranteed damage dealer. And so this is just a little, you know, spiky deterrent to say, get away from me. Okay, that is their stats. Man, I feel like druids would really hate these guys. They don't like life that much. These yeah. liches. No, they got a lot of death and, you know, death-inducing powers. They are powers. death themselves. So. They are dead, yes. Yes. All right, so that was kind of a book, but now that we're through that, let's talk about why it all is how it is and how it can be used. Let's get into personality. So, you're probably wondering, what makes a lich tick? Well, number one is that liches are normally very high, pristine spellcasters. 
number one. That's what they were before they became a lick. That That's what they were before. Number two, there's not a lot of liches because you're either insane, like really insane, which is what most of the time is, or you're just really evil and dumb. We'll get into why why they're dumb in a second. Yeah, it has to do with the process of becoming a lich. So liches were individuals before they became a lich, and they still are. Mm -hmm. So they maintain their personality. So with that, we could say that they could have any personality. And in a sense, they can. However. So they could be good? They could. Not the basic lich, but they could be. Uh, there are There are good liches, which we'll get into. But that's for later. Right now we're talking about the basic lich. And the basic lich has to undergo a certain process to becoming a lich. And so what we know about that process, if if someone goes through that process, we know they're a certain type of person. So, for example, part of it might be to do something terribly bad. Like a death knight. So that's where we can get the assumption that they are somewhat evil because a good person would never do that thing. Mm -hmm. So here's some things to consider with their personality. First... We need to consider that they are a very special undead. If you ever play a lich and have them being some, like, mindless, crazy undead with powers... You're playing them wrong. Yeah, that's totally not doing them justice. They are special because they maintain their soul and therefore their mind. And their mind, to become a lich, had to have been quite amazing. So this is very special as an undead. Um, and this is also, they're also special because they're one of the only undead that actually chose to be undead. They looked at the contract of saying, hmm, this is what I give up and this is what I get. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. You know what I mean? That's, that's what a lich is. So that's special. Okay. So I have here some words that are traits, personality traits that I think the lich pretty much you can always say has, even though they are individuals. Insane. Insane. Um, to a degree. I think insane. They're not mentally... I, you know, I don't like the term insane for the lich, well, they Well, everyone that, like, views lich to me, even, like, the gods and stuff like that, they think you are a absolute dumb idiot. For becoming yeah. a lich. I guess by our standards, everyone downs a, a lich. So everyone insane. says they're basically insane for even attempting to be a lich. They can also, most of the time, they are malicious. They can't. They are sadistic, and they can become vengeful. Yes. Be that's r the vengeful one is rare. But over time, for a lich, their mind kind of decrades because you're immortal. So they they will become like in like crazy and insane. As the lich grows older, I guess. Which yeah, is, actually, yeah. insane is true. It's just broad. And yeah. so let's narrow it down. So if you just need a quick word, insane works. Make them insane. But here's a little bit more deeper of kind of like what is providing that insanity. So first, they are obsessed. So to agree to lichdom, as a lich did, the wizard had to be consumed by a single desire. And typically... That desire is a couple things, which we'll get into with motivations. But the fact that they're so obsessed with this desire is probably what drove them to basically abandon everything else they had, right? If you're saying, I'm going to die and become undead for immortality, there must have been something you wanted out of that immortality so bad that you were willing to give up all the benefits of being alive. So there's that. The next one is cunning. So they are very cunning, very yeah. cunning. So when we say insane, what I don't like about it is typically insanity comes with the idea that they're not strategic. Liches are extremely tr strategic. Yeah, like liches aren't insane like they're in the straight jacket, you know, they just make random sounds and stuff like that. They are just like they think things that are just insane compared to everyone else. Like They're like, I want this book so bad. I'm going to plan centuries and centuries making a plan to get this magic book. Right. They will do that. And other, and and other beings are like, you're insane. That like, is insane that? to mortal beings. But exactly. when you're a mortal, you know, it kind of makes sense. Exactly. Time is no object to you. Anyway, yes, yeah, so, they so they're cunning um, despite them being crazy. And we know this because to become a lich, the process is insanely difficult. There's so much involved. 
not only do you have to have been a genius to the point of becoming a very high level spellcaster, you had to you have to execute the process of becoming a lich. And this is a sensitive process that requires a very well planned out person. Because if you do it slightly wrong, and and we're not talking about like making a sandwich here, like or making a potion. We're talking about a large cycle of steps. If you do any of them slightly off, time it wrong, you die and you don't re- get reborn as in a lich. You wake up in heaven, you're like, I was supposed to be a lich, and everyone up there is like, oh, you freaking idiot. You think you had the chance? You messed up. Uh, you probably wouldn't have woken up in heaven, but yeah. Oh, uh, well, you, uh, <laughs> the, you would have woke up in the place where the gods judge you, and you wake up, you're like, where am I? It's like, well, you kind of screwed yourself back there, buddy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, if they, so if we have a lich, we know that they're not only super smart because they can cast high-level spells, they executed the process perfectly yeah and that is something only a genius can do so they are cunning and so one example of how they kind of can go about themselves with their cunningness is they are known to instead of confronting enemies if it if it's an option they'll just decide to outlive the enemy because they are immortal so they'll, they'll just wait till the enemy dies if, of so natural like causes. the guy like sieges that the lich tower we're like we'll wait here until you die and the lich is like all right, buddy. Just sits <laughs> that would be there. A dumb. Defense. Just like sits on like a chair. You know, years go by. Kind of like a time lapse. Like winter. You know, the seasons go by. He just sits there. That's all he does. That would be a pretty interesting encounter. It's like you see like a a lich a, that's just sitting there. It looks yeah. dead, but it ain't. It's yeah. just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting there. Just like yeah, yeah. Okay. Another thing that it has as a personality trait is it's self-consumed. It's extremely narcissistic, obsessed with itself. He's selfish. Yeah, and and that is because a lich is eternal, is immortal, and everything else is not. And so what the lich learns to do is value nothing except itself because everything else is temporary while itself lives on. So at some point, a lich will almost always not care about anything else except itself. Mm-hmm. Okay, another thing it is, is reclusive. That's because wizards uh, that become liches are typically very used to studying for a long time and doing experiments and doing research. That's kind of how wizards get to learn the magic that they do, and that's how liches typically learn what they learn too. So they're reclusive because all they do is they study in the room. They study, they study, they study, and they die at some point, sometimes. And so this is interesting because sometimes liches can exist for generations, for more than generations, for a super long time, and no one ever knew it because they just never came out. They were Whatever they were pursuing didn't require ever leaving, so they never did. And so that they just, is... And they're completely content doing that. Like, I just imagine, like, adventurers are busting into the lair of a, a lich. He's just sitting there just writing. He's like, holy Jesus, it's been how long... 8,000 years since I've seen another mortal being? Yeah. Meh, powered kill. <laughs> True. And it, yeah. also, though, a lich can affect the world without leaving. Because a lich can have a an entire, like, tree, or should I say, like, hierarchy of minions, right, that oh, are going yeah. out and doing things. So technically, the lich never has to leave. They just have one high-level wizard under their command that's running things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. So yeah, liches are reclusive. They they have no problem with being by themselves and just building a death machine or whatever they do. All right, the next one, next thing about them is they are vengeful. Um, that it, it's very rare cases of vengeful. Well, when I say vengeful, I mean if you kill a lich, but you don't kill. The, well, yeah, they would try to kill. You them. don't destroy the what? Uh, God, the, uh, the phylactery. phylactery. Then the lich will come back, and the lich ain't going to be like, oh, I lost that one. All right, I'll move on. No, the lich is going to be like, who are those people? Where are they? And how do I murder them and their entire family and their, kill their bloodline? That's uh, what a lich would do. And a lich would tell anyone that's trying to hurt them that they're going to do that if they if they meddle. Right? I just imagine it's like this fire is like finishing off a lich, and the lich is like, do it. I'm just going to come. I'm just going to kill you, all you love, and all your Yeah, descendants. kill this body. I yeah, dare you. I <laughs> dare you. Buddy, I'll be right go back. Go for it, and then the fighter's like, "You'll be dead," so it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, that's right. That's what everyone says until I strike again. So yeah, it comes back and kills them. 
so yeah they, they are definitely vengeful and now whether they became a lich because for some revenge tour could be the case that could be the case but that is not always the case i mean that kind of stinks though you like become a lich for revenge what do you do after you get your revenge you can technically die as a lich a lich can basically like go away yeah if it wants but it normally doesn't anyway the last thing i have about that we know about liches is that they believe wholeheartedly in the problem solving ability of magic and this makes sense because they literally killed themselves with the trust of magic like solving their issues yeah yeah that's kind of like i know magic works many things yeah yeah And so if they have a goal, whatever that goal is, they're going to be using magic to solve it. So, right, like let's say they want to kill a god. Their first thing that they're going to do, and the only thing they're going to do, is use some sort of magic or create some sort of magic to do that, right? (laughs) So, yeah, that's a lich. Um, Now, these are just things we know about them, which are actually a lot of things, but you can add in anything else you want. Um, You can actually have none of these things technically in a lich, but those liches will likely have a very different background than the general lich, and we'll get into that background later. But that background involves a process of doing bad things, doing hard things, and dying. Yeah, and we'll sort of tell you how the process works, but it's very reclusive. And um, and, and And the Wizards of the West Coast did that on purpose. For yeah. us to make it, yeah. Yeah, which is great because just awesome. it can be an entire plot point. So it is, yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to their motivations. So um, their motivations for before lichdom, they want to most likely become immortal to achieve a certain goal that only immortality can give. Yes. So, um, so yeah, so basically they – first things first, before lichdom, they want to find the lich equation – or the remedy or the instructions of becoming a lich. And the Wizard of the West Coast gave us a couple of ideas and a couple of ways. They kind of hinted at a couple of stuff. So I only really found two. So they always deal with something that's evil. The first thing is, is a magic book called the Tome of Ultimate Evils. And it is a book that houses, um, it's very magical and it's sentient, basically. Right. And it ha- and it has how to become a lich and stuff like that. Nor- uh, that kind of is one of the reasons why most liches, normal liches, are evil. It's because the book makes them evil. Like, you have to make a check. Yeah, it's like to the one ring. Like, it, yeah, it corrupts. Yeah, literally, it, it corrupts things. Like, like they said, literally, if you place it down, plants die near it. Animals don't even get close like, yep. this book just kills things just by existing. So it yeah. houses all sorts of demonic, horrible, ultimate evils, basically. And that will have a manual and instructions how to become a lich. We don't know what that is, And the though. book is called what? Um, The Tome of Ultimate Evil, I believe. Uh, okay. Or something evil. Yeah, the Tome of Something Evil. That sounds like it'd have a lich recipe in there. It definitely would. and But we don't know what the recipe is. It could be, like, have a, poison, a, a heart of a man who was poisoned. Have, like, mm. a... We do um, have a – there's a couple things we know, um, which we'll get into later. Yeah. But, yeah, so you're saying their first motivation even before being a lich is to become a lich. There is another way of becoming a lich, though. It, it, it was just going to be a lot quicker than the tome. Okay. The last thing is um, there is a god, the demon prince Orcus. He is the demon prince of death, and all of his he, – he's basically the god of death, like the demon lord of death. So, lit, so people – Powerful wizards will go up to him. He's like, hey, buddy, I'll, I'll serve you for centuries if you make me a lich. And Orcus is, yeah. will make a contract with him, even though he's a demon. Yep. But he's and like, they can sure, actually but... do that with more than just Orcus. With, that is with true. With lots with, like, of deities. Other, yeah, yeah. Very now, bad Now, Orcus deities. sometimes doesn't like his domain being messed with, um, but it can be done. It can be done, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So once they become a lich, they we can assume some motivations about them. So one of them is to maintain their eternal existence. And this isn't necessarily easy. It, you, with the phylactery that we were talking about um, that maintains their soul, they actually have to feed souls into it to keep it running. So how do you feed a soul? 
You feed souls with souls. Yes, and these souls do not feed it for very long. It's almost like a daily feeding that's necessary. Really? Yes. I thought it's like the higher quality of the soul the longer it that feeds could, it. That could be true. Because like I feel like if you just threw like a peasant and just eats it for a day, but let's say you yes. killed like a dragon, that thing is going to be eating off of the dragon that, for like decades. That could be entirely true. So, yeah. so yes. But I guess like one normal soul equals one day. So as you can imagine, they have to be doing a lot of killing or be somewhere where they can capture a lot of souls. And these souls get consumed in the phylactery. They don't get stored. They are, they're gone. So when, basically it's like if you died by a phylactery, you are gone. Yeah, and God. it takes a certain amount of time. So let's say you're, one of your party members gets like their soul trapped. You have a certain amount of time to get them out before they are gone. I, fully, I believe what do you have to do? You have to do re, um, re, reverse, um, what's that spell called? Yeah, Dispel it's... magic, ninth level, but it takes like five days for the soul to get eaten. And, and if the soul is eaten, the only thing that can help it is divine intervention. <laughs> so not even the wish spell can do anything. Literally, yeah. Only divine, only a god could be like... They'll have to like recreate the yeah, soul. Yeah, recreate from the nothing. soul. That's kind of messed up, but it's really yeah. cool. Though. I mean, this wish spell would work. You just might get teleported back in time to when the soul existed or something. Um, I wish the soul would come out of the flattery. Hmm. Hmm. Who knows? Well, then maybe your soul gets destroyed and that soul comes out or something. It's a trade off. Oh, right? God. Anyway. Um, Okay, so yes, they want to maintain their eternal existence, which means they're going to have some soul farms going on, yeah. or they're just going to be constantly murdering things. Well, I kind of forgot. Um, we should probably talk about one of their motivations is to make a phylactery. And like, what well, that's this is a good time to talk about it since we're yeah. motivation. So you're probably wondering, you're like, what the heck is a phylactery? Well, basically... How the Lich gains its consciousness and its intelligence is kind of like a death knight. It puts its soul somewhere else, and that's part of the process. The process rips the soul out of their body and places it in a object. It yeah. could be ranging from a crown, a cup, a necklace, something that is not organic. And um, it act yeah, that is those are options. And the lore, obviously, through the decades of D and D have changed depending on where you look but um sometimes it says it can be in anything that's inorganic other times it says it needs to be in a container of some sort that holds the soul but yes the idea is when you die as a mortal your soul goes up into like the upper planes or whatever it goes Mm -mm -mm. but this is supposed to ground the lich's soul with them or with the phylactery with so they don't move on and it keeps them undead and that's that's the point. Yeah. So without this phylactery, they will move on and they'll just die. Mm-hmm. So yes, the one of their ult, once the, one of their first motivations before becoming lich is to do just that. Make it, and it could it ranges between like fifty days or f- actually fifty weeks to physically make the object, and then fifty weeks to prepare the phylactery for yes. the ritual. There is a so, lot on making a phylactery, and well, due to the yeah. size of the you know. Due to the material, just the sheer quantity of it, we actually might do a mini episode on specifically phylacteries and that kind of stuff because they are a very cool concept. Yeah, very um, awesome concept. Book. So let us know if you want us to do that, and we'll we'll get to it quicker than maybe we thought of doing it. But mm-hmm. yes, so let's let's keep on what what their motivations are as a lich. So they want to maintain their internal existence, but one of the big motivations that drove them to not only seek lichdom but that they are actively pursuing as a lich is typically two things. First one is power. The second one is knowledge. Both of these things are very, very much benefited by being immortal, right? If power is just all about acquiring power and knowledge is all about acquiring knowledge, infinite time to just endlessly acquire things will make both the power and knowledge quantity well, immensely but ta- higher. But technically it's like impossible to gain ultimate knowledge. Like, your brain physically can hold a certain amount of knowledge. Well, not not necessarily in D&D, um, and not necessarily in real life either. There actually has never been found... A cap has not been found on the human brain. Like, the memory mm. has not has not been maxed yet. You know what I mean? Mm. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we don't live long enough to max out our brain storage. 
maybe once we start living like hundreds of years, that maybe our brain will start to be like, yeah, we're going to have to, you know, move, Come on, move guys, your first wait. decade to the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> to the cloud. Yeah, we're, like... we're going to have to delete it and take it off the hard drive here. Um, but yeah, so, so as of right now, they're not even liches run out of memory in terms of what they can know. So they can become very, very powerful. And even if they do find a limit, they probably have plenty of magical items to remember things for them, or they can write it down. You know, they can do a lot of things. Um, but yeah, they, they have quite uh, fill, full minds. Actually, there, there was a famous lich that became a lich because he wanted to write a book series. <laughs> That's not true. Or is that true? Oh, that's funny. I forget what the lich was called, but literally he, like, you walk into this library, and the entire library is a series. <laughs> because he had immortality to write his book. Wow. Yeah. As a writer, that's very funny to me. Yeah. I like so, to write. Yeah, so, pretty cool. But, like, that, I guess there's there was a guy out there that's like, I need to finish my book series. I'm going to become a lich, guys. Becomes a lich, makes hundreds of books on <laughs> random crap. Yeah, it's immortality amazing. would be great for that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so those are the big ones. The But, however, in terms of what they're motivated by, it can actually be anything evil as well, including revenge. It can be anything, and it's typically going to be evil because we know liches are evil due to what it took for them to become a lich. 99% of them are evil. Because, yes. yeah, you have to be insane and evil to become a lich in the first place. So Yeah, yeah. and, and that... And, just to reiterate, that's because of the steps involved in becoming a lich. So let's say the step is you have to murder a living baby or just eat it whole, like while it's alive. Like Go no with the chrono style, just eat the baby, become yeah, a lich. No good person would be able to do that. And so if they do that, they'll become a lich. Well, that's part of it. And there's probably like multiple things like that where like you just have to be evil to do them. That's how we know a lich is evil. So whatever they're motivated by is probably not great. Sure. Maybe it could be like greatest good. Like I had just I gotta eat some babies and I can save the world. Maybe, but they also are dealing with bad entities and stuff like that. Yeah, like, I kind of feel like any good person would be like, why am I talking with Orcus right now? He's a very <laughs> bad guy, and like, I mean, you could be yeah. like the ultimate genius and be like, hey Orcus, um, I'll work for you to become a lich. Okay, and then your entire goal is to kill Orcus. And then Orcus, like, sit, like uh, this is just a little bit or- Orcus. His only desire is to ke- have the multiverse quiet of no living life. He wants to be, like, the last thing in, like, the entire thing. So I just right. imagine he, like, completes his goal. He, like, sits down. He's like, oh, Orcus, remember. And he, like, kind of steps out. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment for eons. I have discovered I- your weakness. No. Cuteness. No! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've designed the ultimate cute. Yeah. The okay. To make cute animal, a baby owl bear mixed with <laughs> yes. other cute, a celestial baby owl bear. Yes. Yes. Barely. All right. So that's their motivations. They maintain their eternal existence. They want power and knowledge. Anything evil. And before they even become a lich, their obvious goal is to become one. So, anything else to add? No. That kind of sums it up. Pretty good. Okay. We're moving to societal structure. Um, it's non-existent. Yeah, so a societal structure I literally found nothing. (laughs) assumes that there's multiple in one place. And the lore has very little to none on this. And so I'm basically hypothesizing. Now, my hypothesis and is that although multiple liches in one place is not common at all, uh, due to just how rare they are and such, hypothetically, they'd have nothing against working together except perhaps conflicting Goals. personalities. Oh. No, let's say they had the same goal. Could they work together? I think yes, they could. But the problem is they're both very selfish. They're both very self of self-absorbed. They both think they're the best thing ever. So they would probably and in, it would not work well. Probably not. You know, in the in the span of eternity, I'm sure at some point they would argue and it wouldn't go well. But of course, in the span of eternity, they you may also find two liches working together. Eternity is a long time. Eternity is a long time. So you could totally find... But nothing lasts forever, though. Nothing lasts forever. And we know this because liches don't are rare. And you, if you think about it, 
Liches are immortal. So you'd think they would just slowly get more and more common. You walk into a city like a thousand years in the like millions of years in the future. Why is it, why is everyone lich? It? Oh god. Yeah, a, yeah, that that would be an interesting that future. Would be an interesting future. Just everyone's, everyone's a lich. A lich. So and like, like you walk up and they're like, "Oh, you're you're doing an illusion flashback one millennia ago." <laughs> Not a good one. You're like, "Yeah." <laughs> oh. Yeah. Anyway, and that's basically their entire social structure from what I found. Or I, I, I didn't even find that. That's just my yeah, hypothesis. I, I thought it was cool. Um, they even help other um, – well, they don't really help. But, like, um, they would kind of – you you would kind of see them um, – like, I, I thought, like, could there be a council of liches? Yeah. Well, That'd I think they're, they're – I think, like I said, hypothetically, liches could work together in any number. The only problem would be their personality. Now, of course, their personality is mainly due to the fact that they are eternal, they are extremely powerful, and that's in relation to mortal, less powerful creatures. If it was somewhat common to encounter more of themselves, perhaps their whole grandiose personality of thinking they're the best maybe maybe kind of will go away a little bit because they're like, well, I'm not the best. I'm just among the best, if that makes sense. So if they meet another lich, they're like, we both understand we're the best, right? Yeah. You know, kind of like Abolus or something. Like, they they think they're the best and hate everything else. But when you put one next to another one, they can have some respect, mutual respect. And I think that's how it would be eventually. The problem is liches are really rare. So if one did encounter another one, that's extremely rare. And they're both coming from a place of I'm the best thing in the world. And when you put two of the best things in the world, there can be only one. My book's better, buddy. Oh, how dare you. My spell book is way better. What do you mean? My child's book is amazing. I got 80 tomes of it. <laughs> yeah, one lich. So, like, one lich goes to the lich that wrote the, like, entire library series, and he reads it. He's and like, he's like, this stuff let is... me just spend a, a few centuries reading your series. Oh, thanks, man. I'll... I'll tell you what you think. And he comes back, this is trash. It <laughs> sags in the middle completely. The The middle 3,000 books are so boring. Like, just get to the part where blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And then the other lich, like, stands up. He's like, how dare you? I spent eons writing this. Eons? That's nothing. Nothing compared to me, boy. And then... I spent eons just sitting around. Yeah, reading your dumb books. I wasted time. <laughs> I, even though I have limitless time, I could have been doing other things. But I want to thank you because I've really learned how not to write a series. <laughs> no. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Liches are the ultimate Lich roasts. roasts. <laughs> <laughs> ultimate roasts. Uh, okay. I think that's enough for social structure. Let's now get into enemies and allies. Well, as the epic undead lich they are, they're going to have many, 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 many minions with them. Yeah, a lot of... Mostly undead. They are very reclusive, so they don't really have a lot of interactions. But that doesn't mean they don't necessarily have a lot of... Or a little bit of enemies and allies. They can have a lot of enemies and a lot of allies. Because they have goals. And if your goal is to be... Like, is to take over the world or something... Literally everyone is impeding on you, <laughs> so you have a lot of enemies. Um, so anyway, but they do have some very common minions that are allies. Basically. And the they don't necessarily have any common enemies. Yeah, no, I, I kind of looked at, like, they don't have any personal enemies with, like, anything. Like, yeah. It, it kind of basically what you said, whatever impedes their goal, that's their enemy. But, um, but let's talk about their allies. Yeah. So I kind of have like a little list. So most of the time their allies are undead. So that can range from ghosts, shadows, ghasts, ghouls, zombie types, and skeleton types. So you probably won't see like vampires or death knights and other things like that unless our goals align. And that's kind of like the only case. Yeah, yeah. So um, just to, yeah. I'm going to add to the undead. So they are they are like hubs they're like sources of necrotic energy so undead are very lured and attracted to liches um so they're so lich is always going to have an immense number of undead mm-hmm. um but yes when we talk about death knights and stuff those also attract undead um but liches and death knights both kind of have that personality of i'm the best so they probably wouldn't work together a ton but if a Death Knight was going to work for a Lich, um, it wouldn't be super far-fetched. It'd be maybe one of the only things a 
Death Knight would work for. But yeah. a Death Knight typically does. But I don't. But that's getting into Death. But I, I don't see like vampire like vampires if their line if their goals align. That's kind of like the only thing. Um, liches can also have physical um, living followers like yes. cultists and crazy people. And you're probably wondering like, well, why would anyone in their same mind go with a lich? Then we should ask the same question. Why would anyone in their same mind follow Adolf Hitler and he had all of Germany behind him? Well, to answer that question, if they have the same goals, they're going to work together. So, like, kind of like... Yes. Yeah, that's kind of reason why. Um, but, you know, it's like, why would someone follow a maniac? No, yeah, that's it's why. true. So, the spellcasters that are typically, uh, typically under a lich, it actually makes a ton of sense that they're there. Uh, because a lich has a lot of power and a lot of knowledge, and that's what spellcasters want. So they're like they're apprentices in a sense. And a spellcaster can say that lich is very powerful and knowledgeable. If I work for them, maybe I can get some of that. So, so yes. So a lich will have lots of living followers, and they are typically actually some of the strongest of their followers because these are not any any people to laugh at. Maybe right? it's these other people, people wanting to be liches. So they're like, how do you do it? True. Stuff gotta, like that. You gotta work for it, buddy. You know. Yeah. It's totally not that book back there that's just in the in the cupboard, you know, hiding in plain sight. You know. Yes. Yeah. Um Yes. Okay. Uh and so they can so they can have undead and they always will. They typically will have regular people as, as minions. And then another one that they typically can have are demons. They'll make deals with demons. Um, and also, a lot of times, they'll kind of, like, chain up demons and kind of have them, like, in their lair or something. Do you think devils would interact with them? The lore says demons, and I think it's just because demons are more things to be commanded. Yeah. You know I mean, devils yeah. kind of are doing their own thing. Yeah. They're kind of smart. Yeah. Well, also, that pertains with Orcus. Orcus is like, yeah, um, lich, servant, now. Here's some demons. Go do my stuff. Lich. You know. Yeah, that's where demons come from, I guess. You know, the, another thing you could have. Yeah. Um, okay. And then in terms of minions, there's one more thing. You can also just have your basic minions that are scared, too scared to disobey, or that are, have com- actually been, like, mind-controlled or dominated so or whatever. So goblins, kobolds? Okay, that's a very good thing to ask. Um, they typically, if they have minions like goblins and kobolds, they will be way down the hierarchy. And so a lich will never associate or like talk with something such low power. It it ha- it doesn't. It wouldn't. It would probably just kill it outright. Um, a goblin comes just like, sir. We won the battle, and the lich it looks at you. What the heck are you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kills power. So kill. what what the lich is going to be doing is the lich is going to have some some high elite minions, and those minions will have their own slightly less powerful minions. And those minions will have their own slightly powerful minions. And so the lich only really will interact with the top elite. And then the elite will interact with below them. And what's below them will interact with so below them. So goes all the way down. have, like, armies. Yeah, so like a goblin a or a kobold could be under the command of a lich. But it's going to be through a huge network of minions. Hmm. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I take it, is that the end? To, uh, do you have anything else? I do want to say one more thing, and we kind of touched on it already, but they can have relationships with evil deities, um, typically if they're u- going through that deity for their lichdom, but they can also just have relationships, because they're actually, they're pretty, they're getting kind of close to a deity's power sometimes, they can get very powerful, um, but these, these relationships can vary, so some of them, like I mentioned, may not like that a lich is doing what it's doing, and so it might be a negative relationship. Some might have contributed to the lich becoming a lich, and in return, the relationship is you do what I say, and you I've given you a job. So yes, you can learn knowledge and stuff, but you need to also be doing this, right? Um, so if it was Orcus, it'd probably be like, you also need to be killing everyone. <laughs> I want the world to be quiet. Yes. Um, but sometimes it can be more like, uh, all right, this is how you become a lich. Uh, I might need you every now and then to like, you know, you know, oh, execute yeah. a target or something. Uh, but yeah, so so they might just get jobs every now and then. Like, oh, this sentry, I need you to go murder this king. And they'll just be like, all right, 
They'll get it done. Wait, what century? Wait, how do you know it's going to come in like 500 years? My prophecies, I don't know. It's <laughs> always coming there. Yeah. Um, and so they can have relationships with deities. So minions, deities, those are the two big relationships they have. Anything else, there isn't really any... It could be anything, right? They're an individual. They could have relationships with anyone else. Uh, but if they're if the other th- creature is good, it's probably not going to be a very healthy relationship. It's probably going to be more of an enemy type relationship mm-hmm. because they are typically evil. Yep. All right, let's get into layers. So, yeah, um, probably the most layery of all layers in Dungeons and Dragons themselves. Liches and their layers are very, very famous and very well known. A lich's lair is very, every lich has a very unique lair, but um, there kind of has to be a couple of things that they need. One, it needs well, to wait. be a... Place. I want to reiterate, I want to just add on that a lich in their lair is a CR 22, Ooh, but they are a 21 on their own. But typically, creatures don't go up in power in their lair, right? But liches do, and that's because of how crazy like op their layers make them so they they need to go up an entire level and and that this and it's a huge level because this is 21 to 22 this isn't one to two or four to five this is 21 to 22 that's a jump in xp of over ten thousand. so like it's a big difference just at putting them in their layer mm. yeah um but yes continue so what yes. needs to be in the layer yeah the so one thing is it needs to be flowing overflow just chocked full of magic. Magic needs to be filled in every place of this lair. Some of the most famous lairs are full of magic, kind of like the Tomb of Annihilation, which is an entire campaign where you're in a lich's lair. That's the entire campaign. Yeah, so the Tomb of Annihilation, one of the most famous lairs in D&D history. Um, normally, they will look the shape of a temple, a castle, or a magical wizard tower, Normally, their lair is what they lived in before they became a lich. So it's kind of like what their house, their home was. And it's also going to be somewhat secluded. Yeah, very secluded. So we're talking about like remote towers, um, remote ruins place. that like no one's by that are like haunted, uh, but also like libraries and universities and stuff that's dealing with like black magic. That would be kind of cool. One layer is like a college. Like it was yeah. a wizard college used to be until one guy became a lich and killed everyone else. Yeah. All right, chills there. That, that would be a cool plot hook. But it's going to be somewhere that they don't, that they're not going to be disturbed because they hate being disturbed. Oh, they hate it. Absolutely hate it. They hate those pesky adventures as they kick down the door. They're like, oh my, jeez. Yeah. And we're not talking about a dumb creature here. So if you, if you have players that want to disturb the lich, it's going to be very difficult because liches don't make it easy. And I mean very difficult, right? Yeah, it's so, not like they just put a trap down. Oh, it's going to no. have multiple layers of I, difficulty. I, I was going to get into that. Literally, yeah. um, like there's going to be puzzles, magic traps, normal traps, monsters, guards, um, just insane stuff. Like, you know, if, you, if a lich's lair can be, be an entire year's worth D&D campaign... That kind of shows you how crazy their layers can be. Yeah. And that's the most famous lich, so that he has the craziest layer. But this, but, but uh, yeah. lich's layer should be it's, the most dangerous and difficult layer like you ever make as a DM. Like one, one of the biggest. Like yes. if you have any crazy ideas, now's the time. Um, so, like Ethan was saying, the classic version is a tomb. Because tombs have a lot of rooms, a lot of hallways, a lot of opportunity to just make things confusing. So tombs are kind of a go-to. Um, they're going to fill the, the tomb with things that resemble their cunning mind. So we're talking about traps, guards, mundane, and magical. Both. Not just not just magical, which is what you'd think. But they're going to have both. They may just have mm-hmm. you know, a pack of wolves in there. Who knows? Uh, that wouldn't be too bad, but it, you know something that's not yeah. too hard. Or they might just like have people living there, or like a minotaur. Like it's just like, hey, five minotaurs can, are living in there because why not? Yeah, because the tomb is probably like a literal maze, so it's like minotaurs. You can live here, just don't disturb me. It, I'll be in this room. You guys have fun. Well, you they can... probably wouldn't even be able to disturb them if they could. 
Yeah, like they would probably get lost. <laughs> like it's it's so big that even minotaurs probably couldn't map the entire thing. Well, I don't know about that. Minotaurs yeah. are like that's their, their that's their whole thing. So I, I think a minotaur so. might be able to. Maybe. Maybe. But that's saying a lot to think that maybe they couldn't. Um, okay. Yes. So you had mentioned a few things that are in the layers. Really, at this point, it all we there is to say about it is that they're just huge, difficult. I do want to say one more thing. Yes. So they are very huge. The hardest you, – you should make Lich's layers the hardest layers known to man, known into the world besides the gods layers if they have one but um yeah another thing is you're probably wondering what like treasures could be in the lair right Mm -hmm. they're gonna be stock full of magic items staffs wands scrolls potions magic items just like scattered literally everywhere books tomes if you want to find magic items go to a lich's lair if you survive but yeah Yeah. that's one of the last things i want to say just to you know, for the DMs out there, put a lot of rewards in it, unless the Lich has them all. But even the Lich will be carrying a staff of wands and stuff, so you can put yeah, that Yeah, the, the Lich way. itself will have well, legendary magic. items, yeah. so give them those. Yeah. Um, but we'll get into that later. But they're layers, so final thing, just, just some things to think about. Make sure, like, there's basically undead roaming the halls at all times. Undead everywhere. Constructs as well. Constructs constantly Iron roaming, Iron Golems, that kind of thing. Um, you can also throw in some bound demons. Like, hey, if you go down the stairs, the a ball, Indiana Jones style, pulls up behind you. It chases you down the stairs. You get to the bottom, seals you in, and all of a sudden you're in a giant pentagram that's concealing a Baylor. You know, something like that. Do you think a lich would, like a Baylor would, like, be with a lich? No, I, th- no, I think a, a, a lich would trap a Baylor. Oh, it would trap him? Yeah. That's so... That's just a natural defense. That's actually so... Like, the Baylor's like, freaking finally. And if the Baylor gets out, the Lich would either trap it again or kill the Baylor. You re- do, you, do you think a Lich could kill a Baylor? Absolutely. Like, like, 1v1? Yes, completely. I do. Wow. It'd be, it'd be a good fight. I guess that's kind of yes, true. I it's like Gandalf killed a Balrog. Imagine, like, a Lich Gandalf. Yeah. That's basically... The I mean, if we're fighting. just looking at CR, a Lich is much higher. Right, that's true. And who knows what magical items still... And remember, the Lich also... In, a Baylor is intelligent, but a Lich is a next level intelligent. So, like, like the Lich can have, like, oh, this is the anti Baylor magic item that I... Ka-boom. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so bound demons and stuff. But it doesn't have to be demons. You can have anything bound up. Uh, have tons of secret paths, because why not? Like, have them all over the place. Like, random. And have them, like, not even, like be used like they're just paths that are secret but they don't do anything like they're they or maybe they just go to places you don't want to go maybe they're constantly moving you know who knows um escape hatches and such because the the lich would be ready to escape if needed they've had so long to prepare everything's going to be ready and then the final thing you want to have in a lich layer is kill zones kill zones are places that you want your players to be led to. And if they go there, there should be a very big chance you kill the entire party. Oh. So basically TBK parts. Yes. And basically, if you're a player, um, you should not go into a lich unless you are ready for a very, very difficult uh, la- dungeon, right? Even for le- there, There's a reason why the Tomb of Annihilation got its name. Everyone that went in never came out. Level 20 yeah. people never came out. Celestial never came. Literally everyone who went in there died. So, you know, yeah. they, it's, it's annihilation made. rooms should be present. Exactly. Um, and this goes for the phylactery place, too. Typically, because a phylactery for a, a lich is so important, a lich will put it somewhere that's almost equally guarded to itself. It will not typically keep it with itself. So you might find a layer of a lich, but it's actually the layer of a phylactery, um, which is actually a better find. If you find the phylactery, you've beaten the witch, the lich. You do have to find both. Wait, but... so do they separate each other? Like, will, like, the lich, like, layer somewhere else and the phylactery is, like, somewhere random? C- completely, yes. Like, you may find the phylactery, like, in an anti-fire box at the bottom of a volcano 
or like just just like five thousand feet under the ground in a cavern that only like a tiny hole goes down to to put the souls. What? Or like, well, what I, I've actually found pretty interesting. I guess this is a sort of fun fact. The tomb of annihilation apparently is a phylactery for that lich. The tomb itself. Interesting. So like I thought, you I was get like, creative you with could really make the layer the phylactery itself. So if you want to kill the lich, you got to blow the place to literal kingdom come. Yeah, that's interesting. There's a lot of cool places. Yeah, a flak. You could put a flak cool You could make. Yeah. You could make it a baby. Are you really gonna kill this baby? So, but the only thing you consider the flak is the oh, lich. That be. is where the lich re, 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 uh, is reborn. So it's not gonna be somewhere that it doesn't want to be reborn. So you're not gonna like. So actually, at the bottom of a volcano, actually, it doesn't work unless They're there is a cavern there. That is free of the lava. But they can always teleport out. So, like, it can be a completely concealed place. Because they spawn. If they have a spare spell book, they pick it up. And they're like, all right, yep, teleport. Or dimension door. So, yeah, so they're not sorcerers. So they can't just, like, do magic by themselves. They have to, like, look at a book. Yes, but they probably have a billion copies everywhere. They probably just start, they just throw them around. So they or do you, do you think they, like, m- memorize them? Yes, they probably do that too. Yeah. That's a prepared spell. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, so their layers, in essence, need to be the most crazy big, difficult, deadly dungeons you ever make. Done. That's a that's a lich's layer. Basically, yep. The gist. There's a re. You know, as I say again, given names of tomb of annihilation. These yeah. tombs, these layers, should annihilate everything that goes in. Nothing is going to live or escape it. Yeah, we're that's taking an immortal being that's also insanely intelligent and giving it all that time to just prep people coming into it. So yep. it's home alone to the max. If home, like the burglar's going, it's like, oh, God, it's a lich. And the lich is like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All righty. Anyway. Okay. Now we're going to get into. Actually, no, we're not. Oh, uh, no. No, we're not. So in the layer. Oh, you got to do the layer actions. There's layer actions the Lich gets. I can say one. Okay. So one of the cool things, which I think is really cool, is they can regain spell slots. So basically what they do is they roll a D8, and whatever it rolls, it gets that spell slot, right? Or lower. Or They get a spell slot equal or lower to the number they rolled. So if they roll an 8, they can get any spell slot they want except 9. Oh, oh, oh okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of broke. It's insane. Very, in, it's very good. But I mean, if they roll a two and they haven't, if they and they haven't used any second level spells or first level spells, then nothing happens. That's a so st- it could just be a waste. But it definitely gets good. Like if they do use their like power word or power world stun or something, an eighth level spell, like they would definitely just start using that. I mean, yeah. But anyway, okay. So yeah, that's the first layer action they have, and that costs only one. They can also do one target thirty feet, and they can tether that target to themselves. And what that does is if the Lich takes any damage. It um, hurts them, right? It hurts. It, half of that damage goes to the target if the target fails a DC 18 con save. That is real. Like, these layer actions are really cool. They are. Because it's like, card. it's like you're, <laughs> it, there's like a brawler coming up. It tethers itself to the brother, brawler, and it's like, hey, if you hit me, you're taking half your own damage. <laughs> or it tethers itself to the wizard in the back because those typically have low con and that now if you hit me big guy your wizard's gonna get killed so do it when a light like he does it to like the wizard and then the wizard's like i'm gonna throw six fireballs <laughs> oh he kills himself just his legs just he he's like oh wait <laughs> yes it's so what what like do you just explode or like what happens do like fireballs magically spawn above you and you get hit like, what type no. of damage is this? Well, so, I believe it's described as, like, they point, and then this, like, green energy kind of connects them. So, I think what happens is if they take damage... The energy goes through the core and hits them. I would say more like they take the damage, but the energy pulls the life force from the... I mean, who knows? You can describe it however you want. I just imagine just if like, they get hit with a fireball, I'm I don't imagine a fireball coming out of the sky. I imagine just the whoever they're tethered to, like their skin just burns from nowhere. 
You know what I mean? Oh, God. Something like that. That's horrible. Okay. Anyway, and their last layer action is they call forth creatures which have died in their lair. So these, like, ghostly ghouls. And just- what they do is they surround a, uh, a target uh, within 60 feet. That target has to make a DC 18 con save or take 52 on average or 15 D6s uh, necrotic damage. And they take half on a success. Wait, so he basically does the Night King calls his homies. The homies surround someone, deal a bunch of damage, and then do they just plot they're not, again? I don't, they're not physical. They're, or they're ghosts. They're, they're like ghosts. They just appear for a moment, like claw at the guy or, or gal, and that person gets messed up. Hmm. Okay. And that's, a, and that's, a, that's a lair action. So they could, they could do that all the time. That's a powerful lair action, knowing 50, you said? Very powerful. This Very is the, powerful this is the re- action. I mean, that's the big reason. These layer actions are the big reason that they go up to a CR 22 because they get more spells, they take less damage, and they can deal more damage. So do you think a Tarrasque could, like, would just destroy a Lich Lair? I have no idea. I don't know. It kind of eats wherever it goes. Probably. Okay. Rip that Lich. He's like, God dang it. Literally all the things that could happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Tarrasque comes. Yes. I mean, the Lich would be fine. The, the Lich would, would get out of there. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so now we know what their layer actions are, and we've previously talked about their stats. Let's get into their combat strategies. Yeah, very big. I can kind of give what they would do in the beginning. Because that's all Before we get to the fight, oh. there's some there's some setting. So do you have anything before the fight? We would want Wait, to like, order, right? Like, like role-playing, you mean? Like, would they, like, no, just, just things that are relevant to to why they would fight how they fight all right you, if you don't know what i'm talking about then the answer would be no yeah no okay <laughs> so the first one is because they're so intelligent because they have true sight because they probably have all sorts of ways of determining you're there and because they're immortal and they've probably like known about you ahead of time they know that you're there so you're not sneaking up on them they probably know why you're there and they also probably know who you are because they just have such a network of magic and mundane ways of finding things out that they know all those things so they're going to fight in a way that is very knowledgeable of who they're fighting so what? basically they fight like if the dm was there yes exactly. whatever the lit whatever the dm knows the lich knows a lich fight is very close to fighting a dm because that's scary because the crazy thing is you're if you're in their lair especially because if you're in their lair they'll probably pick up magic items left and right and use them there's that. So that's just the DM saying, yeah, I'm going to make this magical item. Yeah, I uh, just imagine, like, like the Lich kind of gets surprised and kind of shuffles back, grabs, like, a staff of just pure, like, annihilate, and you know, just instantly blows up, like, everyone. There's like, okay, they're all dead. Just <laughs> places it back, he, like, taps the magic item, walk, just yeah. does his, like, daily stuff. Yes. So, so, yes, as the DM does, the Lich knows everything about the characters. But sometimes, if your characters are you know, especially careful or something, the Lich may not know. And if that's the case, the Lich will look at the fight as... A learning experience? No, as the the characters that are have arrived are not a threat. Because the Lich is so self-absorbed and think they're the best that anyone that shows up, they just don't, they don't respect inherently. So they're not going to fight all out to begin. They're basically going to go easy at the beginning. And that can be good. So you don't want the Lich to know about you. If you let the Lich know about you, which is very hard to avoid, but if it does happen, the Lich is going to be using everything it has targeted specifically for you. So that's one bad thing. And second, it's going to if it if you actually are a threat, which you probably are, it's going to go hard right in the beginning. But if you can somehow not let the Lich know that who you are, how much of a threat you are, then it's just going to kind of play with you to begin and if you actually are really threatening those are a couple rounds of very those are very valuable rounds right because those are rounds the lich would normally have been like trying to kill you right away trying to plane shift you just gone into the material plane of water you know like it's God, a plane shift is so insane it's just like yeah you're going to the material you're going to plane of fire and you spawn in like a lake of lava yeah like, oh <laughs> so th- the Lich wouldn't do that in the beginning. The Lich would just kind of like throw some some normal spells down. Um, and that's your chance to be like, let's hit him hard right now before he before he knows we're such a big threat. Because mm-hmm. let's say your wizard casts like Disintegrate 
if he hits him, the lich knows that 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 wizard's a big, you know, big wizard, big wizard now. But you just hit him, so good job. You know what I mean? That's yeah. something it, the lich would not have allowed you to do if it already knew. The only problem is the lich almost always knows. So good luck going through its whole, whole layer without it knowing. Do you think there would be any role playing things like the lich is like oh. Yeah, you can have any role play. A lich is fully capable of communicating and actually. Just like, so you guys, what are you guys doing here? It's like, we came to kill you because you're a butthole. And it's just like, but just why? Like, you know. Why? Like, you really think you can do that? Like, you really think you can interrupt my my work? Like, I got things to do. Yeah. I got to go to the soul store, all right? I got to go there, you know? And you guys are messing up my schedule. So you better have a good reason before I obliterate all of you. Yeah, I would imagine they would be pretty long-winded. Like, they'd probably talk a lot because they have no – time doesn't matter. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'll just give you a speech for, like, a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So a few more things. When talking about how they would fight, physical confrontation is going to be the absolute last thing that they go to. They're yeah, not gonna. They're, they're not never, gonna hit. They're really never. I mean, they're, they're not never gonna really going to do their, sword out and fight their with it. touch, paralyzing touch. No, they will because it's very powerful. But it's I mean, kind of a way of like, like, just like you're too close to me. You're paralyzed. Go away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> go away. Um, but they're not gonna like pull out a magical great hammer and jump into the fight. You oh, know what I mean, that's that not. Would be sick. I just imagine it's like the wizard. It's like, all right, guys, expect a lot of magic from this lich, and the lich is like, hell no. He pulls out like the hammer, <laughs> the thunderbolt. He's like, let's go. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but no, they wouldn't do that, just and like, that's just because they can't take a lot of hits. I, they. That's gosh. their big thing. They they're squishy. As a DM, you need to make sure your lich is protected. Otherwise, it's not going to be that crazy of an encounter because you can kill a witch, a lich, really quickly if if the lich isn't playing like it would. They're squishy. They're, They're very sponges. squishy. They're damage sponges. Yeah, but but don't worry. If you're worried about your lich dying, we got you. This, they are, there is a certain way of using a lich that will keep them mm-hmm. completely safe. So the first thing's first. Wait, 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 uh... wait, wait. Last thing. So we are about to talk about their strategy, but their actual strategy – there is no actual strategy. It they they are individuals, and they have so many spells and so many options that w- their what their strategy will be is very dependent on who they're fighting. It's because they have so many spells, like there's no way they're gonna go through all of them in the whole fight. Someone's gonna win before they're done with all their spells. So, which spells are they gonna choose? That's the real question. And there is no right answer. It completely depends on who they're fighting. Um. So, what would you say is their strategy? And who is it targeted against? So, basically. Yeah, no, that's what I was going to say. So, melee combatants, barbarians, and fighters are not really their main concern. Because they know spellcasters hurt. Because I'm a spellcaster, and it hurts to get hit by magic. And they just don't respect And they, the yeah, classes. I was about to say that. They literally do not respect magic classes. Um, no, 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 non-magic classes. Well, yeah, that too. Well, they don't respect... Okay, so they don't respect anyone. Basically. Yeah, they don't respect anyone. They don't respect other magic because they're just weaker, and they don't respect people that don't do magic because that's that's they're like laughable. It's like, wait, you don't do dumb. magic? You have no power then. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, you you m- monkey level. And it's kind of true. It like is. against the lich, while martial classes can be very good against other things, against the lich, it's very it's tough. It's magic be magic. That's kind of like your only chance. Unless you are a kind of resistant type of. Unless there's a party of only five barbarians. <laughs> I just imagine the lich comes just like, who the hell are all of you? Just every, every all the barbarians just look like identical. Mm-hmm. We are the twins. They, just they look, wouldn't be twins. Or, or, They'd be like septuplets or whatever. We are all related. Identical brothers and sisters in arms. And they all pull out like their great axes and they just enter a rage together. Yeah, and then he just kills all of them. But yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're all 300 health. That's insane barbarians. That's true. That's a lot of health. health. Yeah. yeah, if they split up. That's true. It's like, so <laughs> actually, that's one actually, of us is going to get to that, you. That's actually a good strategy, though. Have all barbarians, all of them maxed with health. So that's like 300 health. You know, yeah. raging. And hopefully some of the rages will, neg- will negate. The only problem magic. is you'll basically be unable to stop what the Lich does to you. you that know is what I mean? True. So it's just not going to work. It's going to be like, all right, you're stunned. Now there's four left. 
But like, um, all right, you're five, paralyzed. Well, anything that has, you're frightened. He, no, he has a lot of con stuff though. Which barbarians excel at con. Yeah, but he's a lot of other stuff too. That all right, so true. let's talk about this. So yeah. I have almost all their spells down here, and about kind of what they would use them with. I kind of have just for the begin, like the highest of spells. You're saying what they would use those spells? Yeah, so um, if you're probably wondering what they would use, like, powered kill for, um, what the spell does is if you don't have 100 health, it just instantly kills you. So they would obviously target that at the spellcaster. They would be like, you're dead. Yeah. Kill them. Anyone under 100. Anyone under 100. And they would know if you're under 100, and if you are under 100, you're dead. I'm sorry. Like, it, it, if the DM is playing an actual Not even death witch, saves. Not even death saves, no. Rip. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't no, actually it just, know. It just instantly kills you. So, like, if the DM is showing no mercy as a lich would, sorry, one, one of you spellcasters, you are dying in the first turn. If you have less yeah. than 100 health. If it knows you're a threat. But I believe you do have to make a con, uh, some save. I don't think no. that... Out, oh, it just instantly It kills. outright kills you if you're below 100 HP, but if you're not, it, um, doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, so... Sorry, spellcaster. It's a nice level spell. One of you are gonna die, but he's gonna be like, "Okay, there's a lot. Okay, you're dead." He he's just gonna choose a spellcaster who's dangerous. But if you're above hundred, you're safe. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah, so he actually, you better not let yourself you. drop. Yeah. So now we're going to get into his eighth level spells. Uncontrol monster is a misleading term. He can control dominate monster. Dominate monster. Sorry, is kind of a misleading term. He can dominate all creatures with it. Right. doesn't have to be monsters. Including players. Including players. So you could point to Barbarian. That's He would probably point to a martial player and be like, you're going to be my, my little servant. Go kill your other spellcasters. He wants to kill the spellcasters first. Number one, he thinks you're a disgrace to magic and you're a literal stain compared to him. So he, he wants to flex his magic might upon you. So he's going to dominate your friend and he's going to kill you. Yes. That's one thing. That's kind of like what a control monster will be used for. Um, powered stun. I don't really know what that spell does, but I take it it stuns the person for a stupid long time. Yeah, powered stun is the same thing with the HP, but if they're under a hundred, they get stunned. For how long? A minute? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. It's it's pretty powerful. It's still powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Being stunned for a minute. Because you're you're just stunned. So yeah, it's like, all right, yeah. I guess you're out of the fight too. Yeah, right? exactly. So he might do that to a uh, another spellcaster as well. Um, let's see. Um, Finger of Death is just a really high damaging spell. It does like what, like fifty to eighty, or like mm-hmm. maybe twenty. Yeah, so it does a lot of damage. So a lot. that'll be one of his main damaging spells he'll be using. And it does not do eighty, but it, it, it does or, do a lot. not eighty, but it does a lot, like fifty. I think it's in the fifties. Yeah, it's in the fifties. That's a lot, you know. Six hits and I'll kill max level barbarian. So. Um, and then just uh, disintegrate another thing. That's mostly for clumsy targets because it's a dexterity check. Yeah. So disintegrate that's the, is. The I clumsy. love the disintegrate spell, but man, I get mad because if you miss it, it's like, oh my god. Well, I mean, so I, it's not good for yeah. for. It's not really the best for fighting. It's not, but like you just got unlucky. You did fight a red dragon. You like legendary. Right, you talking about a recent event? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, but um those are for the clumsy targets. The last thing I kinda have now let you take over is oh actually two more things. Is plane shift. Um they're not gonna fight to the death because they're intelligent beings. So when they're about to die, they're gonna plane shift to somewhere random. I disagree. I, I mean I disagree. Well, I mean, it kinda depends. Like let's say they're out in the open, you know, they're not in their lair, they're gonna plane shift. I don't think they'll lair. use plane shift to retreat because they have other spells for that. Dimension door, stuff like that. Plane shift can be used on oh, other beings. I guess so that's true. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess you can make barbarian good to the elemental plane of fire. That is true. But you know, I guess you can use plane shift to make someone go somewhere else for a very long time. Make them sad. You know. And um the last thing is as a DM, just to add some extra flair and some taste into your lichy lich. Um, we kinda already said this, but use potions, magic items, scrolls, wands, and staffs. That's what they're going to be using. They're going to be popping potions, too. So liches can pop potions. So, actually, this is actually not always true. But in some versions, liches cannot use magic items that require attunement because they, like, don't exist, technically. And they can't use potions because the potions, like, just fall out of them. 
But I don't think it's in five E, is it? I don't think it's not in five E. No. Yeah. But the lore, you know, lore is lore. Yeah, we're talking about five E, buddy. <laughs> not all the. Old no, that's school. actually not true. We we talk a lot of we talk about lots of editions. I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm okay. Just kidding. Yeah. But yeah, sure. Yeah, but it, in straight up stats, they can use in them. straight up stats they can use them, which I highly advise. It makes the fighting a lot more interesting and a lot more scary to your players. Like imagine he pops a potion, a potion of invulnerability. Yeah, he'd have popped he's got something in. else for that. But yes, yeah, yeah basically. All right, so th- th- he's got a lot of spells, and Ethan just went through his big ones. Um, but when if you are trying to DM a lich, you are gonna have quite a hard time determining what the strategy should be because there's just so many options. So I'm gonna make this a little simpler here. There are, in in my opinion, there's two main categories of classes. There are brutes. And there are magic users, right? Everyone kind of thinks that. The there's, lich is a brute. There's the no. The, there's the melee fighters, and there's the magic fighters. Um, so, if the lich is coming up against mainly a party of melee fighters, they're all dead. <laughs> or maybe you just have if it if if it's mixed, then these spells are just going to be kind of used against those melee fighters. So these are the anti melee fighter spells. Dominate monster, as Ethan said, that's because it thing. requires a wisdom save. Mm-hmm. Typically, brutes don't have high wisdom, so that's good. They'll use finger of death because that's high damage, they, and sometimes you just gotta yeah, hurt them. They, you would the, uh, probably a good technique with the finger of death is use that as a finisher move. It's very good at finishing off targets. I mean, that, that's what I've read for their. Comments. So I have the, heard. It so it raises does, dead. It raises dead, but the problem is if you're fighting a level twenty two character, that that is not going to raise them because the way that uh, finger of death raises an undead is if the damage dealt not only drops in the zero, but then the excess damage exceeds that of the maximum hit points of that creature. So, for example, if, it, let's say you, you shoot a finger of death at a wizard, and the wizard has a max HP of 99 hit points, okay? If it kills them, and so the finger of death only does like 50, right? maximum or so it, it's, oh, it's so in there it has to go above yeah so it literally can't so oh, so on okay. some lower level creatures it could but it couldn't on a high level play but it's still a good finisher you're dead you know sure yeah um but yeah no i guess that makes sense yeah but if they were able to bring someone back to from the dead that would be quite the move there because it's like bam now your fellow player our character is is a done dead for me now. I feel like the DM should be like when he kills the player, he just grabs the character sheet and puts on like a shredder. I feel like you know that would be so. I don't know if that would be insane. That's sad. Just like I put so much time. All right, we're going back to it. So finger of death is good for brutes because it does high damage and brutes have a lot of hit points. Um, but it's also kind of not very uh, long range. So it's not. Yes, yeah, it's, so it's close. Range. So yeah, the wizards might be kind of too far. All right, the next one they would use is plane shift. And the best thing about plane shift is it completely negates how much hit points you have. You're just gone now. You know what I mean? And typically, I actually am not sure what the save is, but the save is... A, it's something high for a I lich. think it's like charisma. Isn't it? It's charisma. I Yeah, I believe it. So, so th- yeah. I mean, most most people probably have low charisma. but So I guess anything but bards. But yeah. <laughs> What's a bard go do in the fight? He's like, oh, there was once a story where we're all killing a lich right now, and it's yeah. very scary. They'll live the tell a tale by doing nothing okay uh another good thing against brutes is their disintegrate spell because but only on the low dex brutes sometimes you can have very dexterous melee fighters so they ain't going to target the rogue with this um but disintegrate can also just be used for like general things like if there's a barrier or or like an inanimate object that they want to destroy like this will just little disintegrate it right so that's, that can be good. can't believe they can just Thanos people. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and then the last thing they would that's that's a spell they'd use against Brutes is the Blight spell. And this is just like a base, like a just a generally good attack spell. And it's it's good against Brutes because it's just generally good in general. <laughs> anyway, a lot of generals there. All right, magic users. So what would they use against magic users? So they have two spells that, as Ethan said, are good against magic users. It's power words kill pow- and power words stun. Both of them are all about hit points. And since ma- magic users don't have a lot of them, those are naturally good spells for them. So there. The last one they have is they could also use finger of death 
on a magic user um, just because it does require a con save. So with that, I'm going to give a couple more spells that are good for both because those are not all the spells I have. But those are the ones I'd focus on depending on which type of uh, you know players you have. All right, so these are the ones that are good for both. So they're, o they're pretty much always going to use these spells. Cloud Kill. This is good against clustered enemies, yep. and, it, and it hurts very everyone. Yeah. yeah, so that's very good. Uh, I mentioned Disintegrate on the Brutes, but actually, if it's if the player is low dex, it doesn't matter what class, right? It's clumsy people. Clumsy people, yeah, like you said. All right, Scrying, it may use if it wants to hold that concentration. And Scrying is really only good if you want to shoot your spells around corners or against people that are behind cover. Um, that's a cool spell. That's it, though. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's kind of cool that way. Because you can't... So I'll explain this for a second. Scrying is... You basically can create an invisible orb that hovers around someone. And it acts as like an eye that you just see through and hear through. And you can just spy on them forever. But the thing about spells, right, is... Um, a lot of it is sight. Can you see them? So, like, choose a target that you can see. Well, if you're scrying on them, you can see them officially. So they might be, be behind a wall, but as long as they're in range and you're scrying them, you can shoot them with that spell. So, like, it's it's a loophole. Um, okay, another one they would use kind of all the time is Fireball. And this will be especially useful against stunned and, and paralyzed creatures because they do a lot of stunning and a lot of paralyzing. And since Fireball does require a deck save... Well, you ain't going to make a deck save if you're paralyzed, so it's going to be perfect for that. Um, and then the last thing they use all the time is Ray of Frost. It's a cantrip, but because they have a legendary action that allows them to cast a cantrip, you're going to see them casting Ray of Frost all the time. And they're going to use it on everyone. Okay. Yeah. So they do have defenses as well. So, yes, this is quite a long combat strategy, but in general, they have their spells. They also have their defenses that you need to think about. So they have Globe of Invulnerability, they have Invisibility, and they have Mirror Image. And all of them they're going to use if the players are getting a little bit too close, right? So that, that's, that's all it's going to be. Glo you know, gl uh, Globe of Invulnerability is just going to put up those shields. Invisibility is going to make them disappear, and Mirror Image is going to make them hard Wait, to Wait, so hit. is Globe of Invulnerability basically like a halo bubble shield? You like place yeah, it on the ground and everything is. from the outside doesn't hurt them? Yes. Does it have, like, hit points? or? Um, I'm not sure, but that is, in general, what it is. It's a bubble shield. Yes. Another defense they have is Dimension Door, which they will they will absolutely save for escape if necessary. They will also have escape routes prepared that are just mundane escape routes or perhaps other magic escape routes that are just in their lair. But when it comes down to it, Dimension Door might save their unlife. So <laughs> <laughs> Their own un... That's good. That's yeah. Good. Um, so, yes. Other uh, defenses is Dispel Magic, and this is really only going to be used on, like, major problems. They're not going to waste the spell slot dispelling something stupid. So it'll only be something that's, like, a major problem or is really buffing the, the players. Okay. They have Shield, which is just going to be used in this basic sense. They will use it. It's a, low, it's a low spell slot, so it's not really expending anything important. They'll use it. And, and it's a reaction, so they have those. Um, and then the last thing they have is neither a defense nor an attack. It's animate dead. And this is just to uh, add some disrespect. If you do kill a player, animate them back. You're back, baby. Yeah, but on the other team. Which is scary. Like, won't they be, like, the same player? Like, they won't just get, like, a gas stat sheet. Like, aren't they just going to be, like, the player sheet? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Hmm. Hmm. It, and who knows? But yeah. So I, it's kind of hard to summarize all that, but basically, brutes, you're going to be using things that don't, don't, that require wisdom saves and that kind of negate constitution and strength. And magic users, you're going for them with, because they have low HP with those power word spells. Try to kill them fast. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got cloud kill and fireball and all these things to, to just constantly be doing. And then they have plenty of defenses. So anyway. If you are DM DMing a lich, those are some things to focus on depending on your players. And other than that, just just do your best. Just pretend you're a player with all those spells and try to kill 
the four players you got. Just really try to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Time for some fun facts, just to wrap it all up. Big, lucky yes. present. Yes. Yeah. So I got one. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Um, liches classify wild magic sorcerers as non-magic users. Wild magic? Wild magic sorcerers are not magic users to a lich because it's random and it's wild and it's just... Interesting. Yeah, because the, the sorcerer can't control it. It's just there. So, like, you're not a spellcaster. Literally, the magic mm. is just on. That makes sense because they're... Yeah. Liches are wizards, and wizards yeah. are all about like you know and they knowing kind of, what and, you're doing. And they kind of like a tier list. So like the highest is is respects are for wizards, even though that's like their rivals. They hate other wizards. Then it goes to clerics, the warlocks, and then dru and then sorcerers and druids, and then the wild magic sorcerer, which is nothing. Mm. So pretty interesting. Yeah, I see. That's cool. Yeah, liches are pretty snobby. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Okay, mine is um in terms of full. Phil- Phylacteries. 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 I can never say this word. Um, Phylacteries. Or I want to put an N in it. Anyway, phylacteries. So we talked about kind of what they do and stuff, but they can be really cool because they can have unique defenses and unique means of destruction. So not everyone is the same, right? So sometimes a phylactery might be right might require a very specific way of destroying it. Otherwise, you can't destroy it. So that can be cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, my next one is that um, they will, as they're fighting other spellcasters, they think of other spellcasters as so low. They'll just do spells just to flex on them. Just to show that I am better than you, wizard. You think <laughs> you can compare to me? And they'll just do random stuff that actually doesn't help them, but just makes fun of the other wizard. Mm. It's a pretty cool. Some fun illusions, maybe. Yeah. 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 They'll just like make an illusion of the wizard naked because not only do they have true sight, but they can also make an illusion. And they'll make like some wrong adjust adjustments, if you know what I mean. Insult <laughs> them. Nice. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, all right. So just this is like in terms of how you become a lich. We have talked about it, but I want to just give kind of what you want. If you so you get to come up with a way in your campaign of how liches become liches if it's important. And this is kind of what you you want to do. So, it's not it, it's never going to be common knowledge, so whatever it is, you need to keep very secretive. Um and it needs to be extremely complicated, extremely complicated. Uh and I'm talking like books. Like you could have a full book of the steps. Like with like graphs and like equations and like measurements. And, like, you know, time scales and, like, all these things that are, like, ridiculous. So there's that. Very diff- very complicated. You need to have each step be very difficult on its own. So, like, not only is it complicated and you have to be very smart to even figure out what you're reading. W- once you figure it out, you got to be like, oh, my God, how the heck am I supposed to do this? And so, like, some examples that are given are sometimes you need, like, the the blood of a... The, like the recently killed blood of a phase spider and like phase spiders aren't very hard to kill and get well and i then think you need it's like, like the blood of someone that was recently killed, killed by, by a phase spider, spider but yeah. also the phase spider itself yeah and then yeah and then like one is a cool one it's like you have to find a unicorn which are really stupid rare. Well, super rare. Very rare, which we'll say in the U- Unicorn episode. That was recently killed by a wyvern's venom. Which is like... Wh- just like you'd, okay. You'd basically have to find a unicorn, kidnap it, Feed I guess. To a wyvern. And then get a wyvern, have the wyvern kill the unicorn, which like, okay. And then do it. Like, yeah. it's all this... And that's just one step. And not only that, you probably have to do... You probably have to use that, that blood very quickly like there's probably a time that you have to do it in it, it goes bad or something like that yeah and that, it, it, it's actually crazy like well how it kind of makes sense how there's not many liches out there because yeah like, a lot of people not... probably fail yeah. so that's why we know <laughs> that a lich is very smart <laughs> because yeah. the way okay anyway so it's got to be secretive extremely complicated very difficult even after it's complicated 
It needs to require evil acts. So it can't just be having unicorns being killed, which is evil. It also needs to be like, wow, that's that's messed up. Eating babies. Eating babies. That's a good example. <laughs> I love that example. They're going to Kronos right there like, why do we have to eat a baby? I don't know. Just, yeah, just, like the blood of a baby after you've eaten it and regurgitated it or something. Jesus it's like, why? But it's like, you have to. Um, and then... Because the Tome of Ultimate Evil said so, because it's ultimate evil. Or yes. if you do this... You must collect the tears of you destroying a kid's Minecraft house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ultimate you must, evil, you butthole. You must unplug the console with, before saving. <laughs> the most evil. evil yeah, okay. Axe. Anyway. Uh, yes. And then in the end, the process should always be the wizard basically killing themselves. Typically, it's a concoction of all the things you the, the, the wizard has acquired. So the blood, the poison, the the face bite or whatever, the blah 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 blah, concentrated down into a little vial and then and then just shot back and drank. And that takes weeks, months to prepare. It could take decades to plan. Imagine, I just imagine they set it all up. They're like, I'm ready, and then like their barbarian friend comes on. Ooh, what's this? Grabs it, goes, hmm. Oh, just dies, and then they become a barbarian lit. No, I don't think it would work. You gotta have a certain level of magic, I think. Do you think he would just die? Yes, that's what happens. And so that's what a lot of things happen. If you mess up anything, let's say your baby blood was just like a second, like there was a little bit too much in the in the potion. Or that baby or, was classified as a toddler that first day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then you, instead of becoming a lich, you just die. And there you go. Jesus. So becoming a lich is insanely difficult. But of course sometimes if you like let's say you really a player really wants to like you don't have to make it impossible it should still be possible if you if that's part of your campaign but anyway in the lore it's insanely difficult we don't exactly know what it is but we know it's hard we know that you need eat a baby and kill a unicorn with a wyvern and maybe a face i'm not, I'm not sure what's with the face spiders but all right because those are just really hard they're always like phasing in and out it's like oh god it disappeared <laughs> the face spiders just like oh wizard <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So in summary, it needs to be secretive, extremely complicated, very difficult. Those are different. Requires evil acts and ends with the wizard's death. Done. I love the Next. eating of babies. It's just so random. It's just like, yes, you are yes, We talked about the babies. Yes. All right. I have one more fun fact. Wait, was that all your fun facts? No. Sad. Okay. That's the, a good thing. This is my last part. Oh, yeah. No, why did I say sad? I don't know why. All right. I say your fun fact. The fun God. fact is when a lich becomes a lich, they lose their real name. So then they will get, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, a monikers? Monikers? Basically, such as Black Hand or Night King. Or the Forgotten King. Who's giving them this name? They name it themselves. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, like, like, like they'll never go by their real name. So, like, you won't walk up to a, a lich and be like, Joseph, you committed crimes. Everyone would know, like, the, the, the lich as he's the forgotten king of the undead. You know, it's just okay, like, anything abstract, like, lit big finger. Yeah, big finger. <laughs> yeah, little toe. So, you know, some abstract name. That's, like, their name. That's what people call liches, and that's what they name themselves. Like, I am the Night King. You are nothing. I see. Yeah, Very nice. Pretty cool. Well, speaking of names, uh, lich is an old English word for corpse. That's where it originates. Look at that lich over there. That's just basic history right there. There's so many liches. All right, you, do you have any more? All no, right, we I don't have time done. for jokes. I'm done. Okay. But jokes are good. All right, we're, yeah, this is a long episode, so we, we got to get moving so people can get back to playing D&D. &D. All right, so, uh, so I got two more. They have lots of magic items, and these magic items are a lot of times given to their minions. So not only are you going to be fighting a lich, but you're going to be fighting like a bunch of very powerful minions with very powerful magic items. Kobolds with two staffs, a fireball. Not kobolds, but yes. <laughs> very powerful minions with very powerful magic items. So yeah. Scary. Like a giant Scary. mage with some crazy staff. And then the lich has his own staff, right? Which is better. Probably the lich one. Yeah. Um, okay. Last fun fact is there are actually many types of liches. So, for example, there's a couple here, and all of these could totally be their own episode, so we'll definitely, at some point, get to them. Um, but they'll be far down the line, because, you know, they're not the most mainstream, unless, unless someone would like to request any of them. So, 
One of them, one of them is an Alhoun. That's how I'm pronouncing it. And this is like an Alithid version. Like a Mind Flare Lich? Yes, exactly. That's cool. Um, another one is an Arch Lich, and these are typically non-evil. So there actually are mo- there's actually types of people that will become liches for certain reasons. And this is a, that's a big one we could go deep into. So those are cool. Um, so you might encounter a lich, but it's like a nice woman, and she's like doing good things. Anyway, um, there's demi liches, which are they're mainstream, and typically these guys are just a skull floating around. And what they've done is they've given up their body um, in the pursuit of a different type of knowledge. Whoa. So perhaps they've learned there's there's different ways you can become a demi lich. You can either become a demi lich if you failed as a lich and you like didn't feed your thing. yeah. There's that, but. So before you correct me, you can also very much become a lich on purpose because liches will learn everything there is to learn, and then they'll be like, "I guess I'm gonna have to go more astral now and be more of like a match of like a mystical being." And so they'll become a demi lich on purpose so that they can learn those new things. Because hmm. sometimes they're just they just want to learn everything, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, and then the the a very prominent form of lich is a draco lich, which is the dragon version. Which is less powerful somehow, but all right. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, um, we'll get into those in a separate it's a, episode. It's a dragon lich. Yeah, um, I actually have one more that I forgot to write down, but it's pretty interesting. You know, immortality is a very long time, and over time, liches will want to reach back to their old lives, and they'll miss their mortality themselves. So you could potentially see a lich that wants to die. That's kind of like mm. why liches don't last. Every nothing lasts forever. Not even liches. Even liches want to die at some point. So yeah, and they I forgot we have extra commit ideas. suicide. So. Well, that makes me think of an extra idea. You could have a lich that wants to die. Well, you just said that. I mean, a lich that uh, becomes a lich, but then as a lich dedicates its immortality to figuring out how to become alive again. <laughs> like a reverse lichdom. Like just... I want to be an infant again. It's just like, but with all my knowledge. But why? You just, just like, everyone's just like, he did the one thing you don't want to do. But I must find a way. I remember. I, remember it. I mean, they, they're very smart and they have infinite time, so I'm, I'm sure this The lich would be a mommy's out. boy. Yes. Okay. Do you, do you have any fun facts? Um, or, no. Sorry, I'm, no extra ideas. Extra ideas? Um, you should um, give the lich certain properties from other creatures. Like, give maybe the lich some vampire powers or some weaknesses of a vampire. Like, maybe a vampire Why? wanted to be. I don't know. Well, you know, just add some flavor to the lich. You know, that that would be kind of cool. Okay. Or maybe have a lich that was underwater, like a trident lich. So he's water-themed to lich. Yeah, if you maybe have a like lot a of liches lich. in your campaign somehow. Put, like, a ghost lich. Make them different. Yeah, make them different. But, yeah, that was kind of, like, my only idea. You know, fire lich, lightning lich, elemental liches, ghost lich. That's all your ideas? Yeah, basically. All right, well, then let me just go through mine real quick. So one of them is a story plot. So this is a way you can incorporate a lich into a story and maybe not even make it the main plot. But so once players get semi-strong, some liches may see that as a problem and seek to have your players killed before they get to a level that's actually problematic. Because remember, liches are strategies, strategic. They are strategies. They are strategies. No, they are strategic. So they might be like, those people are on an arc to get pretty powerful soon. They're not on my team. So let's kill them now before that happens. So there's that. Um, Another one is when a lich is kind of like fighting, have a lich make scary promises uh, like as they're dying or maybe like just to – it might be like leave like don't bother me if you bother me you're i'm either going to kill you or you're going to kill me and then i'm going to kill you again or i'm going to try and then kill your entire family and kill everyone you love because i'm immortal and i can do that you know what i mean so make him make scary stuff there with the role play yeah, make him gloat because he thinks he's immortal it's like you're not gonna kill me you know so yeah um okay so this one i like So Lich is definitely meant to be a campaign boss, but I like the idea of kind of just putting the existence of a Lich in your world for players who are not ready at all. And it kind of gives the the idea of like, oh, there's some, like there's stuff we don't want to mess with in this world. And it kind of makes them scared. You know what I mean? It's like, like when you as the DM are like, yeah, there's a Lich over there and your players know what that means, then they're like, 
Hell no. We're going back, guys. Yeah. <laughs> We're going through the the path of deadly snakes. Yeah, so. but even if, like, they're taking... If they're, they're, like, in a country, they're in a kingdom, and that's where the campaign takes place, to know that there's, like, a lich tower off over there that... They, it hasn't bothered anyone for centuries, but they just know about it. It's just kind of eerie to know it's so close or it even right. exists at all. Because if it exists, you're telling your players as the DM, you could encounter it. And that could be a TPK right there. Sad. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a reminder in combat. If the Lich is aware of players... Make sure that the Lair and the Lich are basically doing everything that is a direct counter to the players. This could even be having new spells that are just specifically made against your players. Because the Lich might be like, oh, these dudes are coming. I know this. So I'm preparing. You know, stuff like that. Okay, my last one is um, if players don't destroy the phylactery, definitely make the Lich seek major revenge. And this is using all the minions and all the magic at their disposal. They'll just come back, and now their new mission will be, all right, these guys are paying for that. They're, they think they can troll me around. And that's if you want, them. like, your campaign to continue. Because I guess, like, if you kill a lich, like, you kind of probably just beat the campaign. So, yeah. But if you if you have one that continues, that's how you can do it. Yeah. Alrighty. That ends the lore of the lich. That was a lot. 